In this video, we will discuss the decal type type specifier. So in the previous lectures, we have been looking at the auto type specifier and we have seen how it works. Now we will look at the decal type type specifier, which has some similarities with the auto type specifier, but at the same time, it is also quite a different one. Now coming to the use of the decal type type specifier, at times we might want to define a variable with a type that the compiler deduces from an expression, but do not want to use that expression to initialize the variable. So there may be times when we want the compiler to deduce the type from an expression. That means we have an expression and then we need to evaluate that expression and after evaluating the expression, it will return a type. So you might want to make use of the type, but we also don't want to make use of that expression to initialize that variable. So in that cases, we have this decal type type specifier. This is also something that we have from the new standard of C++ and here what it is going to do is, it is going to return the type of the operand. Okay, we will see how it is done as we move ahead. Now here the compiler will analyze the expression to determine its type, but it does not evaluate the expression. So it means that whenever we have an expression, it is not going to evaluate or find the result of that expression, but it will just analyze that expression and see if that expression was evaluated, then what is the type that it would return? And that type will be applied to the variable where we are applying this decal type. And again, remember that this was introduced since C11. That means in the new standard of C, and it was not available in the older ones prior to this. Okay, now let's take an example to understand how to make use of the decal type specifier. Now, here, this is the syntax that is used. We have to type the keyword decal type. And within parentheses, we have to type the variable or the expression. And then this is the variable to which we are applying this decal type. That means whatever is returned from here, that type will be assigned to this variable right here. And then this is the initialization part. Okay, now if you look at this, we have a function called f, which is inside the parentheses of this decal type. Now, what this essentially means is that the compiler will analyze this function f and it will see what is going to be the type that is returned if this function f was actually called. And that type would be assigned to this variable called sum and it is initialized to some variable x. Okay, so as I told you, here the compiler does not call f, but what it does is it would use the type such a call would return as a type for sum. So it will see if this function was actually called, then what would be the type that it would return? And that would be assigned to sum. So the compiler gives sum the same type as the type that would be returned if we were to call f. So remember this, if we were to call f. So it is just going to analyze if it was going to call f, what would be the type that would be returned? But it is not actually calling f. All right, so let's take some more examples. Now here we can see we are making use of the constant keyword as well. So here it is written const integer ci equal to zero ampersand cj equal to ci. So what does this mean? We are declaring a variable called ci, which is of the constant integer type and it is being initialized to zero. And here we have a reference type called cj, which is also of the type constant integer and it is bound to ci, which is also a constant integer type. Now next, we are making use of the decal type now. So we say decal type c i x equal to zero. Now what this means is that we are trying to apply the decal type for this variable called x. Now what will be the type of x? x should have the same type that is returned by the expression which is under this parenthesis. But we see that c i is not an expression, but it is just a simple variable. So whatever is the type of c i, that would be applied to x as well. Okay, now what is ci? ci we already saw here is a constant integer. So x also would be a constant integer and it is initialized to zero. All right, now next we have decal type cj y equal to x. Now what is cj? If you look at cj, it is a reference type and that would be the same thing that would be applied to this y as well. So since cj is a reference type of the type const integer, then y also would be a constant integer type reference and it is bound to x. Now remember one more thing that we have studied before. We said that whenever we have a reference, whenever we are declaring a reference, then it must be initialized. 
at the time of declaring itself, the reference must be initialized. Now here, if you look carefully, that's exactly what we are doing here. Since y is going to be of a reference type, we are initializing it during the declaration itself. It is initialized to x. Alright, now keeping that in mind, let's look at the next example here. So here it says decal type cjz. Now is this correct? At the first glance, it may seem correct, but if you look closely, you can see that there is a slight problem here. Let's find out. Here as we can see, the type is going to be returned from this cj. What is cj? cj is a constant integer type reference. Okay, it is a reference. And then since we are putting z here, z is also going to be a constant integer type reference. But as I told you here, whenever we are declaring a reference, it must be initialized. But here we see z is going to be a constant integer reference, but it is not initialized. Hence, it is going to throw an error. z is a reference and it must be initialized. So that error is going to occur if we make a declaration like this here. So in order to avoid it, we have to make sure that it is initialized at the time of declaration itself. Alright, so let us go ahead to Visual Studio Code and put these declarations there and see what the compiler has to tell us. Okay, so here I am on Visual Studio Code and I have those same declarations that we saw in the example. And here I am writing some output statements in order to print the type of each of the variables. Now we are making use of the type id function here, which I have already explained in the previous video. So if you have not watched it, let me tell you that this type id is a function that is used for displaying the type of any variable that we want. And in order to make use of this type id, we have to include the type info header as well. Okay, so here it is going to return the types of ci, cj, x, y and z. Okay, so let us run this program. Now before I run the program, you can see there is a small underline here where Visual Studio itself is telling me that there is going to be a mistake here. It says reference variable z requires an initializer. Okay, that was the error I explained to you. So anyway, before I correct this error, let us first run and see what the compiler tells us. Okay, so I type g++ name of the program which is decal type dot cpp and I hit enter and you see there is an error here at line number 9 right here. What is it? z is declared as a reference but it is not initialized. Okay, so that is the error that we have. Now how do I correct it? If I want I can just comment out this line but instead of that let us actually try to fix it. We just know that the initialization is missing. So let me initialize it to let's say 0. Now let me save this control s and you see that error symbol is gone and now let me try to run the program again and as you can see it has now compiled successfully without any errors. So let me run the output file a.exe and you can see here ci. What is ci? ci is a constant integer. So it is an integer type. So i is printed. So in this function it, it does not tell us whether the constant thing is there or not. So it is just going to tell us what type it is. It is an integer type. And cj also as you can see it is a reference type that is bound to ci and it is also an integer type. So it is an integer i and x as you can see x is going to take the same type as ci. So it is also an integer and y as you can see it is going to take the same type of cj and we saw that cj is i so y is also i that is an integer and then next we have z which is also going to be the same type of cj which is an integer so we can see i printed over here. Alright, so that was about decal type and what they are used for and how they work. I hope it was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.